Okay, so the Solon 125 is a solar portable generator, and it's a unit that you can build up yourself. It uses off-the-shelf components, easily available parts. I'll give links to all the parts uh, at laserhacker.com, but this video is really going to go over the construction process. So if you want to know more about the Solon 125, check out some of my other videos on the Solon 1 project. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so welcome to the Solon 125 How to Build video. Now this video is going to go over all the basic steps to build the Solon 125. I'll try to make it easy, clear to follow, so there should be no issues there. Now one thing I must say is when it gets down into things like heat shrink, uh, you know, I'm not going to provide the links to every single place to buy stuff like this. So anything that's readily available, like the wire, or the heat shrink, or an O-ring connector, you know, the stuff you can pick up at your local auto parts store, hardware store, I'm not going to provide the links to that. But go over to laserhacker.com, you'll see a link in this video description for the more unique parts like this XT60 connector or anything that you may have trouble finding. And uh, if I find out that one of the things, you know, that I've listed in this video, folks have a hard time finding, I'll go ahead and provide, you know, a link to it in the how to build uh, parts and link list over at laserhacker.com. Now one other thing I'm going to provide there is a build sheet. It's a piece of paper that you can print out and it will have all the steps for building a Solon 125. You know, it'll specify the wire lengths and, and I'll do that in the video here with the uh, ruler as well, but you may want to print out that sheet because that will give you a good overview um, if you want to build one of these. So we'll get started here with the XT60 uh, connector. This is a great little connector. It's used a lot in the RC airplane world and we've chosen to use this on the uh, Solon 1. Now you see there's two parts to this connector and this, this side here goes to the battery pack and this side goes over and connects to our load. So we're going to begin this wiring harness with this piece right here. Now really creating the wiring harness for the Solon 125 is one of the more complicated steps in the entire build process. So we'll go over this uh, slowly and carefully but uh, we'll just cover every step here. So we'll start with this. This needs con to connect to the solar charge controller and uh, you can see here we have two wires. Now these wires actually came from the inverter uh, wiring harness that comes with the inverter. But let me just go ahead and tell you these are 14 gauge wire and um, I'm just kind of you know recycling and utilizing some of the excess stuff that comes with the inverter here. So let's go ahead and let's prep this and get this ready for uh, the, the beginning of the wiring harness. So I'm going to strip off just a little bit of the wire in here you know, about a quarter inch or so. And these uh, XT60 connectors are marked with polarity marks and you want to take note on that. But you can see here that we can connect this into here. I'm going to go ahead and use this little uh, helper here to uh, hold the wires for myself while we get this in. Now, um, one of the things that I like to do a lot of times is just add a little bit of solder to the uh, points before I bring them into contact with each other and uh, that will make a better bond. And I'll often also put my soldering tip behind the wire so that it really heats the entire wire up and sucks the solder through it. Now over here in the XT60 connector, I'll just make a little puddle of uh, solder there, make sure it bonds well. And now I'll go ahead and bring the parts together and I'll heat it up. And as soon as it heats up, it will sink down into position and let me slide it in like that. And now the last step, uh, I'll just go ahead and add a little more solder, you know. Make sure that it, it'll have it, the rosin on the solder will actually help pull it back into any little crevices or cavities. So you can see there, the camera's a little bit out of focus, let me move this back, but you can see we have a nice shiny solder joint there. And at this point, while it's still hot, I'll often take my heat shrink uh, tube and slide it up over the wire. And I'll let the top portion of it touch that hot area and that will begin to bring the tube down so that it can fit into that hole there and make a nice uh, clean fit. So the heat shrink uh, tube is now in place. I'll just go ahead and uh, shrink that down. Okay, so now we do the same for the negative connection.
All right. So I've completely uh, pre-soldered that wire connection point there. We'll go ahead and bring the, uh, the two together just like last time. Okay. That is good. And I'll just add a little more solder. Make sure that it's really well connected. I'll take the uh, heat shrink. Bring it up into position. Again, allow that heat, the residual heat, to uh, go ahead and pre-shrink that tape down so that it fits down in. There's like an indent that can actually hold the uh, heat shrink there. And now we'll just go ahead and uh, shrink the tubing. And the first part for the uh, Solon 125 wiring harness is now complete. Now we'll start on the second part and the more complicated piece. All right, so moving on to the rest of the wiring harness, I'm now switching over to 12 gauge uh, silicone wire from Turnigy, and this uh, comes from Hobby King, and uh, you can just go to hobbyking.com, look for their 12 gauge uh, silicone wire. I really like this wire, it's very flexible, it's easy to work with. Now this is the more difficult portion of the wiring harness, so um, we'll go over this. We're, we're posting the links to this on the video, so as you watch this video, you, you should be seeing the, the wire lengths for uh, this as well as all the steps on this video, but the how to build sheet from laserhacker.com will also specify you know, the lengths to cut these different wires. But yeah, let's move on here. So now we're going to come into here, and because the Solon 125 can be in two configurations, one of them is a 10 amp hour configuration, or a 20. And this is designed with some versatility. So we really have the ability to go off here, one of these is longer and one is shorter, to one side or the uh, other. So you can utilize a 10 amp hour, a 20 amp hour, and that's the reason for doing this. If you were just going to build the 10 amp hour, you could get away with just one of these wires. But we're gonna go ahead and cover this build video in the most versatile uh, manner. So what we wanna do is we're gonna start with the uh, negative wires and we're going to uh, trim off you know, about a quarter inch. And I'll just go ahead and put these in the, uh, the soldering helper here, this little soldering robot device. And once you get to using one of these, you cannot live without them. You know, a friend of mine uh, recommended this, and I had been working for a long time without one of these, and now I don't know, you know, how I got along without it. Now, I must say, working on this larger 12-gauge wire, it's my preference to switch over to a higher-power uh, soldering uh, gun kind of like this one, and it's just a lot faster. I suppose you could eventually get around to doing it with the smaller soldering iron, but it would take a whole lot longer. So anyway, we're just gonna pre-solder the wires here. So as soon as I get the solder flowing, it really is my habit to bring the uh, solder to the other side and let it wick itself up and through the wire from the other side, and I just think that works a lot better. You know, it's too easy to just get the solder on the top of the wire, not really let the solder suck itself through the entire bunch of smaller wires that make up this 12 gauge wire. So anyway, that's done. We got that ready. And now we will take our XT connector plug, line it up here. Again, take note of the polarity. It's very important. And we will go ahead and connect the first of these. Now, I don't really worry about the arrangement. You know, they're going to connect in here on top of each other like this, but whether the longer's on the top or the bottom is not something that I worry about. Now, before I connect this into here, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-solder this connection point right here. And I, I really do feel that that's important. Um, I think these joints could appear to be well soldered and break if you don't go ahead and pre-solder. So at this point, that's pre-soldered very nicely. I can now line these two uh, up and bring them together. So we will do that. Okay, nice uh, solder connection there. And now I just dropped the back down in here and we go ahead and bring this portion up bring it down into position. Now you really want this wire to be touching that wire and you're gonna flow with a lot of solder over this to bring these two wires uh, together to form a single joint going in. So that's pretty good. You can uh, play with, you know, I'm gonna rotate this a little just to get it at a point where it kind of 
presses down in there a little better. And then as this heats up, you'll be able to, to press this into play. This really is some of the most uh, tricky stuff in building the, uh, the wiring harness. So if you have trouble at this step, uh, you'll, you'll know you're just slogging through the hardest portion of the build. And we want to offer these wiring harnesses uh, pre-soldered and ready to go at teslamaker.com. So watch teslamaker.com for pre-wired, ready-to-go wiring harnesses so that if you want to tackle everything but this step, you can get it from there. So it's uh, maybe hard to see in the video, but basically I pressed this down with my finger and yes, it did start to burn my finger. Uh, these, these are tricky. You know what, this is a, uh, do this at your own risk anytime you get your soldering iron out and start playing with it because these soldering irons, you know, I've been burned. You can see the marks on my uh, hands. Uh, you know what, you shouldn't really do this without some proper training and understanding of how to use a soldering iron. But at this point, you can see that the uh, connections there, it's shiny on both sides. And that's something when you're soldering you want to make sure. You don't want this dull finish or it's probably going to break. But this is a good solid connection. So now I'll go ahead and take uh, some of the black heat shrink and we'll just come up over this and uh, I'm sliding in from the other end on the wire in here. And we'll bring this down into position and get our heat gun. Now in this I really like to kind of push the heat shrink up and let it kind of grip really up and around the plastic so that there's no chance that uh, there, the contacts could become exposed or touch each other. So I start at the top work the heat shrink down toward the bottom and that takes care of the negative side and now we will go on with the positive so same as before we just remove about a quarter inch of the wiring I'm mean, sorry of the insulation you know it's a little bit not quite a quarter inch of insulation removal on this one it's sometimes helpful if one of these is a little longer because of the nature of connecting these. In this case, I'll make them both just a tad long. I think it'll be a little easier to do the uh, connections. All right, so let's get these ready. Just wait for the uh, iron to warm up here. Okay, so now that the solder is starting to flow, and it's starting to wick itself into the wire, I'll begin to bring my solder to the back of the wire here. Let this wire heat up to the point where it melts and uh, draws in completely through the wire. There we go. Okay, so the rest of this process is essentially the same as we did on the uh, negative connection. So we'll just pre-solder this area here to receive that. Go ahead up and line them up here. Okay, we'll do the uh, final connection, and this is really uh, the most difficult part on this build, so we are almost through with the most difficult portion. It's really important that you continue to heat this all the way to the point where you see the bottom uh, solder and the bottom wire also warm up. It's just starting to happen. There we go. And that way you get a nice even finish between the two joints. So that's done. We'll go ahead and uh, get the rest of the uh, heat shrink on here. And the rest of the wiring harness I'm actually going to do with a uh, crimp tool. And uh, I went ahead and bought a pretty good crimp tool from Amazon.com. And I can't recommend it enough. I've been suspicious of crimp joints in the past. And I'll tell you, with the proper crimp tool, um, they can be really, really strong. 
so. Okay, so one last thing we want to do here with the heat shrink is now we have both of these, but these could get caught here and, you know, rubbed back. So what I like to do is take this clear, larger heat shrink tube and put it over the entire assembly. Slide it down to the top uh, seam here on the connector and then bring uh, some heat to that and let that kind of be the final piece of protection to really double protect all the joints in here. And at this point, I will usually go ahead and uh, plug these two together. And now we have the majority of the work done in the wiring harness. Okay, so the next step is to add some of these ring connectors to the negative terminals. So what we need to do is go ahead and remove about a quarter inch of the uh, wire. Sometimes I go a little longer because I really like to see, you know, these strands of wire come out on this side of the area we'll be crimping. And then we take our crimp tool, we bring it into here, and we crimp this down. And uh, you can see the effect that I was talking about with the wire coming out just past a little bit. And we do that on both the uh, negative wires. And I already, already uh, stripped that one earlier, so we'll just go ahead and put that in and crimp it. All right, so that takes care of the uh, negative connection points. Okay, so on the positive side, we wanna come off of here with the inline fuses uh, going over here to the battery bank. And these are 40 amp fuses with a fuse holder. We have these prepped, uh, ready to go, cut to length in a set of two like this at teslamaker.com if you have trouble locating this uh, yourself. But what we wanna do is go ahead and take the long side, because the longest length side is what's going to run over to your positive uh, battery connection point. So we'll go ahead and just strip off about a quarter inch. Go ahead and uh, take our ring connector and connect that, same as we did on the negative side. Okay. All right, pre-stripped uh, this side already. You can see a little bit of the uh, the wire sticking out. Now I've taken these in and forcefully tried to separate this on my vise and things. This makes a really good crimp with this particular uh, tool. So this I got off of Amazon. It's a great uh, crimping tool. All right, so now we need to connect these here using a butt connector. So we'll go ahead and uh, prepare that. Now in this one, you don't want to make it too long. If you come back here over a quarter inch at all on this particular connector, it'll be sticking out past the uh, insulation that covers the connection joint and you really do not want that. So make sure that you don't strip your uh, wire back too far on that point. And again, we just go ahead and make sure we're getting a good solid uh, crimp connection on that. So coming off of our uh, wiring harness that we created earlier, we come out here, we put this uh, butt connector and now we're going to come into there with one of these inline fuses. Doesn't matter which one, they're both the same length. These wire lengths already dictate um, that these will come out to the correct length, so we don't need to worry about anything in that respect. So, let's go ahead and strip this back. Bring it into here. And I like to keep, you know, some pretty good pressure joining these while I get my crimp tool. I feel that if you let this slack up, you might get a, a lousy, uh, connection at your crimp point, but if you keep the pressures tight, that really helps. Okay, so this wiring harness is almost finished. And that really is the, uh, the most difficult step on building, you know, a Solon 125, so if you've made it this far, congratulations. And that right there is the Solon 1 25 wiring harness. If this looks intimidating, watch, because in the future we'll probably have these wiring harnesses up uh, for sale at teslamaker.com. All right, let's move on with the rest of the project. Okay, so at this point we need to take our frame and uh, I'll put a note on this video as to the dimensions for these PVC pipes. 
We need to have our frame pipes ready, the corner sets uh, ready, and these are our machined uh, corners. So if you don't want to make these uh, yourself, check out teslamaker.com for these corner pieces. But anyway, we need our four corners, we need the pipe for the frame, and the solar panel. Now these are the latest 25 watt panels uh, that we're having manufactured to our specifications. So they don't have the corner grommets and they also have the junction box mounted on the back so that it's not sticking up in the way to get in the way at all. So these should be up on our store at teslamaker.com. So check that out if you want to go with this panel. If you want to source your own panel, your own 25 watt panel, uh, proceed in that other direction. It's up to you. Now what I have here is a tool that clips the corners at either a half inch or a quarter inch. We want to clip these quarters, corners at a quarter inch. Now if you don't have this tool, you can uh, clip these corners yourself to match this quarter inch radius. Uh, you could probably just use some nippers or something of that nature. But you can see that when we clip that to that quarter inch radius, it fits in the corner pieces uh, perfectly. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, clip the four corners here on this panel. Okay, now everything seems to go smoother and easier. If you go ahead and attach the uh, solar charger, charge controller to the panel early on. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now I have these, these are half inch by three and a half inch pieces of aluminum. So we got three and a half inches by half inch. And these form some runners that we put along the edge here between the plastic and this panel. And they hold it up off the, uh, it holds this uh, area up off the panel and this disperses heat. So it's good to have a separation there. And uh, we'll go ahead and mount uh, these to the solar charge controller. Things seem to work out pretty well if I take this uh, double-sided adhesive tape, measure it uh, so that clip it, clip it off right here in line with the uh, charge controller and then just remove this section set it aside for the aluminum support. That seems to work very well. Okay, so we'll remove the uh, backing on the double-sided adhesive. And we'll go ahead and we'll set one of the aluminum supports on there like that. Make sure that uh, these are free of oil. Sometimes when you buy aluminum from the hardware store, there's a light film of oil on them and you won't get a good um, adhesion with your adhesive if that's the case. But anyway, these are cleaned up. These are ready to go. So, we will carry on. Okay, so this is ready to mount on the panel. Now the important thing in doing this step is to just line this up square. Now if you're using our panels, this junction box will be mounted down the right distance to line this up in the PVC pipe frame. So I just go ahead and line it up against that junction box, square it, center it, and press it into place. And that mounts the uh, solar charge controller to the 25 watt panel. Now we just need to take these leads, you can see they're marked positive and negative, and we will connect those down. So at this step I also like to take these zip tie uh, connectors with uh, adhesive backing and put these into place. And these form the connector points that allow you to connect uh, your zip tie to hold this all into position. So let's go ahead and get ready to clip the wires. Okay, so let's go ahead and clip these wires. And to do that, you just want to bring this around in a nice natural radius, the positive, to connect into the positive on the solar charge controller. Now it is important that the solar charge controller technically be connected to the battery first, but in this case, this is a low wattage panel and you can you know, put the panel down as you build it to connect your battery pack in. And I, in my testing, it's never been an issue. And it's so much easier uh, to have everything all connected up. So I go ahead and just clip it off there, remove about a quarter inch, uh, so strip off the wire insulation, 
and you can see that it will fit right into there. Now if you press it in correctly, you can even get the, uh, the wire, and this has a fairly large gauge uh, wire insulation on it, but you can press it right in. And I'll usually put the tension down on the wire so that when I tighten this up, it holds the wire in place. And that seems to work really well. There we go. And we will do the same on this side. These things I connect together and save for later. And because I have a lot of these clipped off like this, you'll probably see these at teslamaker.com for sales just so that folks can recycle them in their solar projects. Because I have more than I can use at this point. But let's go ahead and remove another uh, quarter inch or so from this side. And uh, this will do the connections on the solar charge controller. So now that we have the solar charge controller connected to the panel, this is a lot easier uh, to move into position uh, as a unit like this. So that's it. Okay, so now at this point, we can actually go ahead and start to assemble the frame. Now you wanna choose a PVC pipe glue that doesn't set up too quickly. Now this is the Gorilla PVC pipe glue. This seems to work really well. And uh, this can's getting a little old, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a, uh, I've got a new can on the way. But this stuff sets up slow enough where you can adjust the dimensions to the solar panel. And that's important because these vary a little bit. You know, it's just the nature of the production on these that the distances and sizes vary you know, small amounts. So we really have to create each frame to match the uh, solar panel. So to start with, we'll take one of the bottom sections of pipe and we'll go ahead and just glue one of these corners onto it. And at this point, uh, we don't really have to worry about getting our angles lined up or anything. Now just put a small amount of pipe on the outside of this corner. I really don't like to use the glue on the inside of the coupling because it puddles up and will eat into the battery support foam. And this stuff, for whatever reason, this takes a long time to set up if it's inside the corner in testing. So we don't need a lot of strength. We're not waterproofing anything here. So we just go ahead and attach this to our corner piece. And on this one, we just push it all the way down tight. So that one is now set up. At this point, I go ahead and I, I attach the legs and that's just to help keep the frame square. Uh, during assembly. So we'll go ahead and attach a leg to these two corners and we're getting ready to glue this one into place. Now because this, this is the bottom of the frame we want to put our battery support uh, foam down here and uh, this just supports the battery so that they don't slop up and down inside the frame. So now what we're going to do we need to work kind of quickly at this step because we need to put our glue here, slide this together, make sure it's straight this way and that the distance comes in to match here. So this is one of the trickier uh, sections on the build, but thanks to the nature of this particular glue, it gives us the time needed uh, in setting up to get that uh, correct. So here we go. We're gonna bring this together and let's check our distance. And you can see, because I've been doing this a lot and that's really the only reason I got lucky the first time. So whether you call that luck or skill, I don't really have to adjust this. You can see I'm within a sixteenth. So everything's good there. Now at this point, it's important to check the two ends. You know, make sure you're square. Everything's good. We're square. So the bottom of the frame is now complete. Now if you look at this, you can see the battery support uh, suspension foam right there. So we're all in position there. Everything looks good. On the top of the frame, we proceed with pretty much the same thing we did on the bottom. We can go ahead and glue in one of the corners initially without needing to worry about you know pretty much anything. And again, bottom that out completely. You want that completely tight. Now the uh, now we'll go ahead and add the legs to give it some support so that our alignment is correct. Go ahead and put in your battery support control on the top of the frame. And at this point, we will glue the top of the frame together. And we'll see if I get lucky on the top like I did on the bottom. I usually don't get it that perfect the first time and I usually have to re-manipulate things and move things around a little bit. But we'll see. All right, so we're gonna bring this together. So do a rotation, straighten things out. 
and see how we fit at the top. So at the top, I have about an eighth inch gap. So now I need to flex this so that it moves and put some tension coming together on it. And see if I can close up that gap. So it's a little less than, uh, than it was, but it's still awfully wide. So I'm gonna really press this together as I move it here. Again, using, uh, if I was using a different glue, I would not get away with that. But with this particular glue, it allows me to move it and the glue is still setting up. So anyway, it looks good now. You can see there's just a little bit of play there, a sixteenth or so, that's perfect. So no issue there. So now we remove these uh, from the top section. And the last step on uh, gluing the frame together anyway, is to go ahead and glue these two longer legs into the bottom section of the frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply some glue and we'll actually glue these permanently in down here on the bottom of the frame. So now that all the gluing and assembly on the frame is complete and we will move on to the next step. Okay, so now we need to drill a couple holes in the frame uh, for our wiring harness to run through. And we're going to go ahead and use the drill press here. I'm going to use, this is the original Solon 125 that you saw featured on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to use that just for fun to uh, drill these holes. So, turn on the unit, I'll move the camera over, and we will proceed with drilling these holes. Now when you look at this top piece of tubing, you can see that this is the top. This is where the solar panel goes. And at an angle here, we need to drill a hole right here and over here. And the hole needs to be just wide enough to fit one of these ring connectors to run our wiring harness in. So let's go ahead and uh, drill these holes. One more step. And now you can see that we have a hole there that fits the ring connector. So one on each, one on each side. Okay, so that's the holes for the top of the frame. So looking at it this way, you can see and those are just right. Now the next uh, holes are a little trickier. These go in the corners on the bottom of the frame, and we have to drill in at an angle like this into the corner right there for the wiring. So, make sure my hands are out of the way of that step bit, and we will start drilling into it. I really like these step bits because they really have nice behavior for working this way. So you can see the uh, hole that we drilled there, and it fits the O-ring perfectly. Same thing on this side. And it fits the O-ring. So all the uh, holes are done on the frame. We'll go back to the table and uh, finish this up. So I'll just point out here, you can uh, hear the inverter and the fan uh, racing to keep it cool. So we will go ahead and uh, flip the inverter off. It's important to always remember to turn your inverter off because even if you have no load on, if this inverter is on, it's gonna be discharging your Solon 125. So keep it off, keep it shut down, keep it in the sun, keep it happy. Okay, so now that we have the frame uh, ready, we can take our wiring harness and begin to uh, run our negative leads into the bottom of the frame here. Now there is one important thing. One of these is longer and one of these is shorter. And we want to take the longer one and run it through the right side of the frame. So when you flip the frame up and around like this, then this, then it's your left side facing it uh, like that. And we take the longer lead and we want to run it down that. Now I usually take it and I give it a gentle bend right here just so that when I feed it through this hole, I can uh, get it started down the pipe. So here we go. And I can already hear that it's coming down the pipe. So no issue there, and here we have it coming out the bottom. I'll usually just set the frame down to uh, hold that, and then do the same on the right side with the shorter uh, negative lead. The 
Okay, so now that we have it like that, the next step is to take these two um, free leads and to tie some pull strings on them so that when we pull them back, we can fetch them back out easily. All right, so we'll take a piece of string and measure it out uh, to approximately the length of this PVC pipe. You don't want it to be too long or you might pull the uh, O-ring right back out and out the end of your frame, but that should be about right. And I just put a loop here in one end. Tie that off, run that through the uh, O-ring. And then I take a piece of uh, tape here to the free end and you can start to pull the wire back down into position but as you come up to the end of the string here just take a piece of tape and I usually put it at an angle over the string and then I put this in the corner of the pipe like that with a little bit of tape exposed and a little bit of string exposed and that way when you pull this top part off you can fetch the string and pull those negative uh, lines up to access them to connect to your battery. So that takes care of that. We'll go ahead and do the same for uh, this side over here. Do another small piece of tape. There, so now all of that's prepped. We can grab these strings and pull this up. Now, depending on if you wanna build the 10 amp hour or the 20 amp hour configuration, if it's the 10 amp hour, you just pull up one of these, connect that side and leave the other one alone. But that gives you some options, so. Okay, so now the next step is to uh, just spin this around here so where the top is uh, facing up that way. All the cabling on the bottom. And now we want to put on the top piece to the frame. Careful not to let the tape uh, get bent over or it will get caught in the uh, crease. So. There we go. So now what we want to do is just put the uh, panel on here. Make sure all the wiring is down out of the way and not going to hold anything up. And we really just want to tap the top down into position. So that the top of the panel closes up tight. Like that. And that will establish the distances for putting down the double-sided adhesive. Okay, so now that we have the top of the frame snugged up and fitting this panel uh, correctly, now we can take the panel out and put in the double-sided adhesive tape as well as the Velcro. So at the top here, we're going to take some quarter inch Velcro and measure a piece out that fits the uh, top portion here. And this just helps to lock in the uh, top of the frame, really. So we will take a strip of that, put it into place. Yeah. Now I just take the uh, opposite side and stick it right into place on top of that. And we'll remove the adhesive off the back of that later, but we'll just clip it off tonight. And there we go in the Velcro. Now we're going to take this uh, double sided adhesive tape. This is an extreme mounting tape 3M product. And we'll connect the um, tape down between the two corner uh, pieces like that. And what I usually do is just take the utility knife and cut off the excess, just like so. All right, so we got a new roll here. Go ahead and drop in the last uh, piece. So, at this point we can remove uh, 
this protective uh, layer from the double-sided adhesive and put the solar panel down into position. position. and remove the double side adhesive from the Velcro as well. So now we can put this uh, panel down into position on the frame. Just trying to line everything up so that it goes in into position square and straight and fitting in the corners properly. All right. And you want, really want to press everything down to make sure everything is uh, fitting correctly at that point. Now you can see some excess uh, double side adhesive tape sticking out here on the edge and a little bit here. You can take a utility knife and just do a cut right along there to remove any uh, excess adhesive. And that works really well. Gives a nice clean uh, finished edge. Okay, so the frame is uh, now done, the solar panel is attached, now we just need to work on the inside portion here. Okay, so now we're going to take this plug and we're going to put a bend in it like this so that the shorter black wire comes down and the longer uh, red wire comes up on this side. Just bend it like this and I'm going to clip both of these off so they're even. Just like so. Now we're going to go ahead and remove a quarter inch uh, of the wire insulation. And we're going to connect this to the uh, solar charge controller. There's markings on the solar charge controller. One for the solar panel, one for the battery, and one for the load. And this is going into the battery connection point. So now at this point, I usually program the solar charge controller. And I do that using one of these lithium iron phosphate batteries. I just keep one here on the table. And I have this connector, which is very different than the batteries that will go in the tubes. Uh, but rather than try and connect all of that at this point, I just go ahead and connect this up. And this allows me to test the solar charge controller as well as program it. So we'll go over that next. Okay, so programming the solar charge controller is pretty easy. You can see here that it's powered up and it's displaying the battery's uh, voltage. So basically if you hold down this button right here, the far left button, just hold it down, it will start uh, blinking on mode and it will come up at 24 hour. Now every time you click this, it will show a different value. This is the low voltage uh, load disconnect. So as you run down in voltage, this is where the um, controller will disconnect from the load. And I just put this at 10.5 volts. The next value is your load uh, reconnect. I leave that at factory 12.4. And then the high voltage, instead of 14.6, I bring that down to 14.4 volts. Now that's now programmed correctly. Now we just leave it alone, and after a few seconds of blinking, it will return to the main mode. And then this is programmed. So it's very simple. And if you read the manual, you can uh, figure all of that out. And you can also do some interesting time, timer settings and other things uh, with the solar charge controller. So now you can see we're back here, and uh, this is now programmed. So I can disconnect this, and we'll carry on with the build. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the stickers in here. And uh, this is a build that I'm doing for a customer from Tesla Maker. And that's the reason uh, I'm going to put the stickers, I imagine, on the build that you're doing. You very likely will have no need for stickers, but if for some reason you really want to go out all out and get stickers made or something, this is a great time to put in the stickers. Yeah. 
And of course, here's my favorite sticker, please feed me sunshine often. Now, of course, if you would like, rather than just charging on solar alone, you could feed a DC voltage in here, right here where the panel connects and create, you know, use a uh, wall wart type device and charge that up with some DC voltage as well. As long as the voltage and the amperage are within the specs of the solar panel recommendation for this charger, that works fine. I've done that myself a few times, but my preference is to allow this system to just be solar charged exclusively. It's pretty easy just to leave this sitting in a window or in a place where it can get some sun and keep it topped up all the time. So anyway, this very last sticker we'll put on later when we flip the unit over and finish it. So let's move on to the next step. All right, so it's time to get the inverter ready uh, to go here on the back of the panel. So we'll go ahead and uh, open one of these up. So I usually just take the inverter manual out and put it in with the solar charge controller manual. Keep the uh, bubble wrap Try to reuse everything I can possibly uh, reuse and recycle everything that we can recycle. So, now inside of here we have two sets of uh, wires, and this one plugs into a secret wire. We're going to discard that one for now. We're going to utilize this one, and uh, it's marked red and black, so you get your polarity, no issues there. And let's go ahead and connect that to the back of the inverter here. Okay, so once you've screwed down the screws and attached the lugs on the inverter, I just bend uh, them like this so that they'll sit flat against the panel. Now I usually take the red wire, put a bend in it, bring it over next to the black wire, bend it back up straight, and set it down here in the panel and kind of get a distance, but it's usually, you know, three to four inches down. And then I'll just cut both of those wires off together and square. Let's do this for other projects. And now this is ready to attach into the solar charge controller. Okay, so everything's connected up here. Now we just need to add the double-sided adhesive uh, Velcro to the back of the solar charge controller. Okay, so this is the double-sided uh, adhesive uh, Velcro. And this is a 3M product, and this particular product is designed for high heat applications. So I think it's a good choice. And uh, I wasn't going to list any links on where to buy the Velcro. I buy this in a big roll, but if there's enough requests for this particular Velcro, maybe I can put this Velcro for sale in sets over at Tesla Maker, if that would help folks out. Because it would kind of be a shame to buy a whole roll if you only need enough for one uh, application like this. So anyway, we'll see how that goes. Play that by ear, but that's the uh, basic idea. We connect that on there to there like that, and we take and connect the other piece to it, all ready to, to put down into position here. So, and there's some nice little indents on the back of the inverter that fit the Velcro very well. All right, so we'll go ahead and stick the other side on here. And after applying the Velcro like that, we can remove uh, this side and go ahead and put the inverter into place on the panel. One of the things I like about Velcro and it on like this is it leaves a nice uh, space between the panel and the inverter, so you get a little bit of airflow. That's a good thing. Okay, so just center it, line it up in the panel. There we go. Now at this point, I always check the inverter to make sure that the inverter is working, so we'll power that up. 
Okay, the solar charge controller's on. Turn on the inverter. Powers up fine, and then I usually just do a load test with it. And uh, as you can see, the system's working fine. So, no issue there. All right, this almost completes the build. We're gonna go ahead and uh, finish up the rest of the wiring harness and uh, route it where it goes into the top. Okay, so the next step is to take our zip ties and to run them through here. We have these zip tie mounts already in place. So we just run some zip ties into here. That will let us later, or whoever buys this later, uh, zip tie down the wiring and make nice clean wiring there. All right, so this is all done. Let's go ahead now and uh, bring the top back off. You want to tap both sides, otherwise it will bind on you. There we go. Sometimes as that comes up, you'll want to pull the, the Velcro that attached to the panel up and off, and you can just reset that at this point. Put that into position at the correct place. Okay, so now we just need to deal with these two positive uh, wire connections, and it's pretty simple. The longer one runs over into this side, and the shorter one goes up into this side. So basically we take the top, rotate it over to the two holes, and we just feed the wire in through the hole that we drilled earlier. And you want to bring it over. Apologize for the poor lighting. There's a dark uh, thunderstorm outside, and it's really getting dark fast out there. All right, so just pull it out like this and leave the excess wire out. I usually bring the fuse up fairly close to the hole, just, just like that, that's fine. Same on this side. Okay, so that's it. Now, uh, because I'm prepping this one to ship, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in and line up everything, and at this point I don't put the top back down all the way so that it can be removed easier, so that whoever gets this can just slide this top off you know, quite easily. They want to use a rubber mallet, hopefully, and uh, go ahead and put in their batteries. So the uh, final steps are really very well documented on the video I have at Tesla Maker. Uh, Dot com as well as my Tesla Maker YouTube channel and that's the final assembly and because it's the same for those who buy a kit or those who are following this build video I'm going to link to that video in this video's description so when you get to this point check out the uh, the next step in the video and that's really the final assembly it's very quick you're about five minutes away from connecting your batteries and doing final assembly Okay, so we have this parts bag, and these parts bags are available at teslamaker.com just like this, but I'll go ahead and release the STL files. Uh, you can find all that at laserhacker.com. I'll put links uh, up for this stuff. But what we have in here are six spacers, uh, six set screws, and an Allen wrench, and that's really just the little hardware package. So that pretty much uh, completes this portion of the build. I'm just gonna flip this over. On this side, uh, I always put a sticker up here at the top. put a Solon 125 sticker up here at the top, and uh, that really completes uh, the build section. So check out the, uh, the video on final assembly. Again, I'll link to that in this video's description so you can find it very easily. Follow that video for the rest of it, and you'll have yourself a complete Solon 125. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, leave any comments for questions you may have on this video or contact us at info at teslamaker.com if you have trouble sourcing any of the parts. And uh, let's all keep experimenting, keep sharing our discoveries, and we'll talk with you later.